Hello, and welcome to the second installation of Philanthropy Geek Exchange, where we'll be talking to effective innovators in the field of philanthropy. Today, I'm joined by Annie Hernandez from the Frida C. Fox Family Foundation, and she's especially going to tell us about their Youth Philanthropy Connect pro program. Welcome, Annie. Great. Thanks. Hi, Nathaniel. So uh, just uh, get us started. Well, tell us um, you know, an outline of what's happening with the, the Family Foundation and uh, why they started Youth Philanthropy Connects and how the program works. Okay, great. So the Frida C. Fox Family Foundation is based out of Studio City, California, and our mission has always been to maximize the potential of youth and children, and so the foundation has done that in a lot of different ways um, over time, and it is a, a smaller family foundation um, that started with doing responsive grant making and then really found that um, that they were more engaged and that they were really feeling the impact of, of the work that they were doing by going deeper in certain areas. And so um, over time we've done that in a number of different ways through some capacity building efforts, for instance, with grantees or um, even working in a funder collaborative around environmental education. And um, one of the aspects of the foundation is that they had always involved the youth of the family, um, really since very, very close to the beginning of the foundation. And um, so we call it our junior board. So when you turn eight, you get to join the junior board of the Frida C. Fox Family Foundation. And, um, and over time, as the youth um, became uh, more skilled as grant makers and learning about philanthropy, they also started sharing the story of what they were doing with the broader philanthropy field. And so um, I was actually working for um, another family foundation called the Lumpkin Family Foundation out of Illinois and was also working with their youth and engaging their youth. Um, actually at age 10 they started grant making with the Lumpkin family. And as some of those 10 year olds had continued to, to grow and, um, and get older, um, as they were teenagers, we were really looking at what was, what was that way that we could engage them as before they became board members. So kind of thinking about that um, leadership secession pipeline for youth. And so like a good program officer, I asked the youth, okay, so you know, here are some options of who we could hear, hear from and learn from around youth philanthropy. And um, the option that they chose is they wanted to learn from other youth. Um, which isn't surprising, knowing um, the emphasis around um, around peer learning, um, especially within our current younger generations. And so we had this wonderful learning exchange between the Lumpkin youth and the Frida C. Fox family youth in 2010. And from that, um, the Frida C. Fox family youth actually went back to their board and said, gosh, we want to meet more young people that are doing work in philanthropy and out of that is um, a couple of years later what, what we now call Youth Philanthropy Connect. So the Frida C. Fox family invited other family foundations to come together at Disneyland which was a nice bonus to get, get the youth excited for coming um, to the conference and, and it really led to this um, terrific experience of youth that are involved in philanthropy and many of them initially were family members. We now have a mix of family and community based youth philanthropy programs that come together and the youth share their models, they learn about promising and best practices in philanthropy um, and they actually make grants together and it's been this amazing experience um, of youth being able to come together. and. As a component of that, we also connect the adults that are supporting those youth, and um, and that's led to you know further resource development to support foundations and families that are doing this work. So it started with family foundation youth boards, but is it now connecting also to community foundation? Is that what I'm hearing? Community foundation youth boards or other? Um, we've talked to after school youth, uh, youth philanthropy programs. So is it how is is that? How's it broadening or um, interconnecting the different entry points for youth for philanthropy? Well, that's been one of the most interesting things. So I actually made the transition from the Lumpkin Foundation to the Frida C. Fox Foundation in late 2012. And when I made that transition, what was really interesting 
is you know we spent the first six months really mapping who was doing what where and we started by looking at family foundations and what's been fascinating is that there are so many different ways that family foundations are supporting youth philanthropy work. <laughs> um, so you know there are families like the Fox or the Lumpkin family which are supporting their next generation of the foundation. But then there's uh, foundations like the Deco Family Foundation uh, based out of northern Indiana that they actually support um, local community foundations to run youth advisory councils for instance in their area. Um, and then we have um, a number of family foundations um, that have been involved that are actually also running programs in schools. Um, and so what we recognized is that um, those had always for the most part been siloed. Like the work that was happening in schools was happening in schools. The work that had been happening in community foundations, which a lot of that is based on the work out of the Council of Michigan Foundations, um, which has been doing this work for 20 plus years through community-based youth advisory councils is what they call them. Um, and then we have really this emerging field um, thinking about secession planning and, and next generation efforts, um, especially within family foundations. So we really found that there were these opportunities if we started looking holistically around youth philanthropy to really connect um, around data and impact, um, to connect around learning and making sure that the um, the best resources and materials are shared, um, et cetera. So what we've been working on now is um, we've the Free to See Fox Family Foundation has made a couple of partnership grants to support youth philanthropy and youth philanthropy connect work this year. So we've been working on what is aggregation of data and impact look like in partnership with the Foundation Center. We've been looking at how do we create um, more resources that are kind of real time ready to roll. Um, with exponent philanthropy for families. Um, and we've also been working with the National Center on Family Philanthropy to continue to develop these resources for especially family foundations, which we found probably out of, there's been a lot of things happening community-based youth philanthropy, there's been a lot of things happening in school-based youth philanthropy, so this was really kind of the bigger opportunity for us to help to create you know, resources um, to support and, and share what's working. So I'm really excited that you have a particular perch where you can see uh, youth philanthropy emerging in these three silos and you're looking at an opportunity to, to weave them together. Two questions that come from that, from that and you can choose your own adventure here. One <laughs> is, um, I feel like youth philanthropy is an emerging field of practice or community of practice and um, so I'm wondering if how, how pervasive are strategic youth philanthropy programs in those three silos and how much growth uh, do you anticipate? So there's a sense of like, you know, is this going to be 20, 30, 50 percent of, of foundations uh, are, are going to be looking at their youth development? The other one too, and this one's perhaps a little more challenging, which is that if you're, if you're coming from a family foundation perspective, that background's going to be a lot different than school-based or community foundation-based, uh, community foundation especially around class. Uh, because you know, I, my sense of those uh, those efforts outside of family foundations and family wealth is that they're trying to diversify um, the makeup of the student body and introduce people uh, across class to philanthropy. Uh, so, uh, can you share some thoughts on 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 those two issues? Sure. So, you know, I really see, especially in community foundations. Um, with the leadership of Michigan and really setting out this model for years and years, um, you know, that many community foundations are thinking about, one, how to have some sort of outreach program that's specific to youth in the community, right? Now, the other side of the house within community foundations, of course, is thinking about their donors and thinking about engaging those donor families. And a lot of times, those two have been very separate. So I foresee in the future really this opportunity of those being more connected. So um, I think we'll see things like, for instance, um, out of the Greater Atlanta Community Foundation, they have this Planet Philanthropy that they've run for years. It's working with donor families, but a lot of that same content could also be used in the community, working with community with with youth from the community. Um, I also see um, that 
as we continue this secession planning, next generation conversations within the field of family philanthropy, there's really an opportunity, especially, well, there's really this opportunity to influence families to think about aging down that next generation conversation. And I think if we're able to provide examples and, and, um, and inspire through families that have really seen the benefits of engaging their youth young, I think that, and, and we can begin to make the case about why that matters and how that impacts their lives going forward. Um, I really see this also as, as that emerging um, community of practice, as you talked about. So I, I foresee more foundations moving this direction. The other thing that I think we can really influence is just foundations, especially if they're doing work or, or in grant making for for youth, be it through after school programs or through education, that this is an amazing opportunity to, um, to ensure that you are engaging a youth voice in your work. And that could be your own family, that could be community youth, but the youth the youth are in school all day every day. They are great experts at education, you know, as a result of that. Um, and I also think, you know, one of the things that we've really tried to do with Youth Philanthropy Connect, and especially by at our conference, having youth that are coming from families of wealth with youth that are coming from community-based youth philanthropy programs, there's, there's quite a balance of that now. And I think it really normalizes the experience. You know, mm -hmm. for many of these youth, regardless of their community-based, they're part of a community-based program or a family philanthropy, most of them have never met other youth that are doing this kind of work. So just to normalize the experience of being involved in philanthropy first and foremost, but then also um, creating a respect for the diversity of those voices around philanthropy is really what we're doing. So, um, you know, I guess as I look to the future of, of youth philanthropy and the future of philanthropy, I guess, broadly, you know, my goal is that there there is more diversity of a representation of who's at the table and who's making the decisions and being involved in philanthropy. And so, you know, many of the youth that w when I ask them, like, what is philanthropy? They say, oh, well, it's it's giving. And to them, it's very broad and it doesn't have to look um, as structured, I guess, as it has um, in, in our current day. And so I really feel like by having that interface between the youth coming from different perspectives is actually a bit of our secret sauce. That's great. So we're close to time and um, I have one last question uh, that maybe you've already answered, but before I ask you my last question, is there anything that you want to add? Um, we could go on and on. I want to know what inspires you and challenges that you've <laughs> you know, surmounted, um, but I want to give you a chance to convey anything to, to our audience that you might like to. Sure. Well, one of our presentations that we were making um, last year, Zach Witten, who's one of the Lumpkin family members um, and has been a part of their youth philanthropy work since he was quite young, um, someone asked him, you know, well, aren't you busy with, with school and just with everything that comes with being, being a college student? And, you know, how do you make time for, for youth philanthropy? And he said, you know, I just... I don't know any other way to be at this mm. point. Mm. And I think my final advice would be just the value of engaging youth in these kinds of conversations and experiences. Um, and starting young does matter. And it's never too late to start. But I think starting young matters because it really can influence you know the values and the experience that these youth are seeing, seeing, seeing the world through, and if they're seeing that world um, through a more just and fair and and sustainable way, um, I really think that's that's where the future of, of philanthropy should go. Great. Well, that that gives me my chance. And like I said, you may have already answered this, but I'm asking everyone. Uh, if, if you're successful, if the field is successful, how will philanthropy be different in 25 years? Well, I'm hoping we have a lot um, younger people <laughs> on, on the boards of organizations, but I also think just more people engaged in giving broadly, um, and, uh, and that to me means, you know, a diversity of ages, a diversity of voices, um, and, and I think that 
there's this recognition of, you know, we're not, it's not us as individual organizations, it's us as working together, you know, as, as networks, as people that care about causes to move those forward. And so that we, we aren't as stuck in our kind of organizational structures and decision making, but that's, you know, in a much more, you know, shared collaborative sense of how we can um, make a difference in the things that we, that we all care about. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for set, uh, spending the time today and for all the work that you do. Good luck with your uh, upcoming conference. Do you want to give a plug for your, for your conference, or are sure. you all, all, so all you sold can, out? <laughs> you can definitely come and, and still join us at Disneyland um, July 24th through the 26th. Um, for our fourth annual Youth Philanthropy Connect conference. Um, we'll be um, learning about how Do Something makes their youth campaigns. We'll be inspired by a lot of, of youth leaders and having a lot of um, fun learning around philanthropy. So we'd love to have you join. Thanks. And folks can find that at fcfox.org slash YPC. And I think there's a yeah. link to the conference there. All Perfect. right. Well, thank you very much. And um, and for everyone who tuned in, thanks for, for joining us.